I am not quite in the mood right now to do another random thoughts video like the last one. Although um, there are some random thoughts going to be in this video. Uh, I had realized immediately after I stopped recording the last video that the the thing that inspired me to start the video in the first place, um, it, which is, uh, it's called Dejon. Uh, I didn't mention it all in the video, which, you know, par for the course as far as I am. This is an awesome picture. Um, I don't remember saving it. I know I saved it within the last few days because I have my Trocare folder saved in, uh, arranged in uh, modified arrangement, which means the most recent files are at the very end. And this is towards the very end. Anyway, what inspired this video, which definitely will get talked about, is a little tool that I found on a blog, um, which is pretty awesome. We'll go ahead and bring that up right now. Oh, right before I do that, this I like this picture a lot. This is very evocative. You have this path winding through the mountains. And then you have this little entrance here, which is, you know, look at the size of this dude. He's tiny. And these statues are absolutely gigantic but because of the location in the middle of the mountains right here no one would ever find this place you can have you know this could be literally an hour's walk from the nearest town and people might not have found it due to the uh precarious nature of the pathing here and just the winding uh and obviously there's tons of fog you're so high up that you've got clouds you looking down on the clouds rivulets of water right down the side of the mountain anyway there's this thing called dungeon words put out by rhesus monkey let me see if i can oh i don't know how to zoom in anymore uh yep there we go okay oh there we go rhesus monkey dungeon words 240 evocative words to spice up your dungeons use them to stock an empty map jazz up an encounter or inspire a new dungeon from scratch Roll a d12 for the table and a d20 for the word. So yeah, risismonkey.com is where I found this. Uh, there's a blog there, and I was reading the blog, and they had referred back to his dungeon words, and I found this, you know, just now, um, even though it's been around for a year. And then this is an example dungeon he created with it. Uh, I guess he made this map or found this map, and then he just rolled on the table um, to add these words to it. I don't know if he literally rolled on the table or if he just picked words to go, you know, that went well. But you can just, without even reading anything down here, you go down the stairs, you have this room and it's stuffy. There's a transforming juggernaut. This room has wailing. There's alchemy and quintessence, artifice, sweltering, and a bottomless with a pit in it. So a bottomless pit. You've... A good DM, someone who knows what they're doing as far as impro uh, improvisation, you could hand them just this right there and they could put together... I mean, a good DM can put together uh, a dungeon from, you know, nothing. Really good DMs are really good. I've, I've played with a couple of them. But <clears throat> this is enough. Just the word stuffy to give you a kind of idea of the, the details that you could put out to players... Um, and what this helps with is you don't have to necessarily, if this was just a blank room and didn't have the word stuffy on it, there's so many different possibilities that you can actually, you know, you don't think of them all. But having these 240 words right here, one, you can randomly roll for it, or two, you can just, you know, pick a word that you like and decide that that's what's going to be going on in that room. The fact that we have this the sweltering here and the stuffy here makes me think that this entire dungeon complex, or at very least, you know, the right side of it, is warm and humid and, um, you know, warm and humid and hot and sweltering and stuffy. I'm trying to avoid the sweltering and stuffy words. Um, artifice, when I saw this, uh, artifice and then sweltering. So you have a transforming juggernaut. That's just a big enemy. Wailing, I'm expecting this to be some sort of steam engine which powers the transforming juggernaut. Um, then you have artifice here, where I'm expecting it to be kind of like a repair shop or a construction shop, um, where parts and things were made for this transforming juggernaut. The sweltering area back here is like a giant, um, you know, there's like a giant furnace. It supplies the heat and the energy which runs the 
wailing steam engine as well as the forges and then of course there's this bottomless slag pit where you know runoff or maybe they you know take crap from the sweltering area and bring it over here or maybe this is a coal mine they actually found like a, a giant uh section of coal so they move down here and they excavate some of the coal to bring back up and put into the sweltering area to run the forges and then there's of course like a chimney rock that goes up and lets the smoke out and then, of course, alchemy and quintessence. I'm not as fond of this side. I mean, there's obviously stuff here. This room is filled with various lubricants and acids and other kind of industrial solvents or chemicals necessary um, for certain uh, aspects of keeping this transforming juggernaut running. And, you know, I don't know off the top of my head what quintessence is. I, I'm particularly fond of the right side of the dungeon. Anyway, that's not what we're here for. Um, and you don't even get to read all the words. I won't let you. You can read what you can see. What I did was I came uh, in here and I used my old trick of uh, closing my eyes and putting a bunch of random dots all over the area. Um, I can point out, for example, that there was a dot here. This slash here was a dot. This was a dot. This was a dot, etc., etc. And I got a dot right here and another one right there. Anyway, I went around and I did my whole thing where I just draw a bunch of loopy lines and I try not to connect the dots in a uh, in the, f the way you'd think they would connect. I add a bunch of loops and go out of my way to avoid connecting. I know, for example, that there was a dot um, somewhere like right in this area. There were two dots by each other. And so rather than connect them, I went way out of my way to connect them. Um and then section five here, all of this part did not exist. So I had this one big cave and then this giant looping passage to get around to this cave. And I said, that's a little too railroady. I mean, there's literally only one way to get in here and then go around. So I added this, this uh, tripartite uh, section in the middle. And then what I did was I went back and I rolled on the random table. So part one, I had Tenebris. If you're not sure what tenebrous means, it means dark and gloomy. Uh, then precari I numbered these before I rolled. I decided and I added this uh, big blocky thing in the middle to break up this one giant cave into sections. So section one is tenebrous. Section two is precarious. Section three, I rolled grave. Section four up here, I rolled slab. Five acolytes, six toxic, seven torture. I will say that these big... Uh, what were I was originally imagining were pits here, here, and uh, this one up here, which is going to be like a long, thin uh, crack in the wall that you had to like get down on your belly and kind of scoot under. That was my initial thought before I rolled any of these words. After rolling the words, however, okay, so number one is tenebrous. They're just coming into the dungeon or this cave complex, as it were. So we're going to describe this initial area mostly... Uh, play up the fact that it's pitch black in here or there might be some residual light coming in from uh, this tunnel like maybe this opens up to the daylight so you're getting you know it's pitch black beyond the opening section here but this area is definitely very shadowy very gloomy so the players are going to have to provide their own light um, they're not going to know even you know right here even though this is a gigantic opening they have no clue what lies back uh, past here so then section two, precarious. I was up kind of upset that precarious came up here because I had already drawn in this cliff facing in the background. That's what that's supposed to be. Um, I, I put this together literally in like one minute. Um, this was another just a big cave. So I said, OK, I'm going to artificially make another room up here by making this a cliff face. Um, so I was hoping, you know, that something like precarious could go up here just because there's a cliff and a precarious fall. You know, stuff like that. Anyway, since this is where Precarious came, uh, I decided that the floor sections in that area were going to be weak. Um, there were certain parts where the floor had already kind of sunk in. And that hints to the fact that there are these underground tunnels or chambers um, beneath the area. I should say that room five here, um, the reason why I have these dashed lines, that's to show that it's at a lower elevation. Um, my original thought was you would have to go down this pit or down this pit to access part uh, room five. And like I said before, uh, crawl through that uh, 
area to get in uh to fall down kind of like a storm drain on the street you'd have to get down on your belly and scoot down underneath and then there's just you know it would fall down into the room below um but that will change as we find out here so three is a grave i decided there would be a small amount of graves that were dug here into the uh the dirt of the cave and uh actually one of them is conceals a hidden passage um, it wouldn't necessarily be all the way back here. I would modify the map a little bit. But there's this uh, earthen grave, and it actually is like a trap door, like we saw. Did I? Huh. I'm a bit confused. Tioman visited me over the weekend, and I think I showed him the uh, pictures of secret tunnels. Let's go back here. Yes, here's this. So you have that. And then it opens up. That's awesome. Look at how well hidden that is. You would never find that. You know you wouldn't. Um, so there's something kind of like that over by these graves. And that's how um, you gain access to Section 5 here. Section 4 has slab. And once again, there's a hidden doorway in here. Um, and... It's not so much hidden as the Acolytes having made their secret entrance over here. Originally, they used a crack in the wall here to get in. When they finally finished their concealed entrance in room three with the grave, they uh, put a very large slab of stone in the way in section four. Now, it's not entirely, you know, hidden because someone has to go all the way out of their way to get back here into this section of the cave. Um... But it is very heavy and difficult to move out of the way. And if you did decide to start, you know, uh, rolling the slab or sliding the slab or toppling the slab, it's going to give the acolytes in Area 5 a lot of uh, notice ahead of time. So five acolytes, as we've been talking about, I decide since I rolled acolytes, well, why not? There's some hidden creepy cult in this cave. And uh, they decided that they would have their nice hidden lair here in the underground section the underground section of the cave in the even more underground section of level five here um toxic so apparently there's some poisonous gases in cave number six and uh you can see cave seven has torture so maybe those poisonous gases are uh absolutely deadly or maybe they're just uh damaging you know, they maybe have an effect on your nervous system or um, they're slightly acidic. And over time, they cause actual physical damage to you, your, your skin and eyes. Um, so for torture, I decided I guess there's some manacles dug into the wall or maybe there's a cage that's, uh, you know, bolted down to the, the rock floor of the cave up here. Um, and this is uh, I I'm imagined when I first drew it that it's an up cliff face to get into area seven. Seven is at a higher elevation, but it could actually be at a lower elevation than area six. You have to fall down into cave seven. Um, but anyway, something torturous is going on up there. The whole point of all of that is just to show you, um, I drew a really crappy looking map and then I rolled some uh, numbers on the dungeon words PDF. And now you have a whole dungeon. I mean, not a whole dungeon, but I mean, you have a lot of, there's a lot of idea space there. There's a lot of things you can do with it um, to make sense of it. And of course, with me, I love being beholden to the uh, the randomly generated things. There's a, one of the very first books that came out for third edition D&D was the Hero Builders Guidebook. And in the back of that, there is a... Uh, like a PC background generator. It tells you wh what kind of community you grew up in and how many family members you have. And if you're any of your ancestors were famous for something and all, and uh, a couple little important incidents that might have occurred in your life. I loved it and I loved rolling up um, characters using it and trying to make sense of whatever results it gave me. There's a couple things like here where I roll precarious and I really wish that it was over here where there's a cliff face. But by not moving it to the obvious location, I'm forced to come up with something else and that helps to spur the creativity, helps to make you a more uh, creative and critical thinker. Um, but 
at the same time, you're not forced to try and make sense of everything. Um, I could have rolled these exact same words without, you know, picking the order that they came in and then assigned them to different sections based on what I think would make the most uh, coherent and fun dungeon. And, uh, ob- well, I, it just occurred to me, um, this is also where obviously one of my, uh, s- the dots, and it was a big, ugly looking one, apparently. I think it's like this kind of slash right here. Anyway, this could probably lead on further into an even more dungeon area, uh, which definitely makes the poison gas area six a little bit easier to, uh, a little bit more of a barrier, something that players overcome in order to get further into the dungeon. And of course, um, you would increase the uh, lo- the amount of underground tunnels. For example, since two, if I decide that the floor is going to break out, I'd want to add more tunnels or areas uh, stemming from part number two. And of course, connecting down maybe to a lower level of this dungeon. But this is like a mini dungeon, kind of like his mini dungeon. Just something to, to look at and uh, kind of figure out what you'd do with it. And other than the Acolytes, none of the other stuff precludes there being other enemies. Toxic in Area 6 could just mean that there's poisonous snakes in there. Or a big spider lives there, and it's poisonous, and that's what the Toxic is for. There's so many different ways to to take the words. I've done them uh, as literally as possible because that's lazy thinking on my part, and that's easiest is to just think of it literally. It's toxic. Oh, the cave is toxic. There must be poison gas in it. As opposed to, oh, this is the toxic cave. So something poisonous is in there. Anyway, uh, that was all this video is going to be about. Um, eventually, in the future, at some point, I will do the video on Dajon. And I know I might have mentioned the Duchy of the Black Hand before. But since Dajon and the Duchy were both created in a similar set of circumstances... I'll probably uh, go into a little detail about both of those. Until next time, bye-bye.